Hey guys, listening to the English Made Simple show. This is episode number 249, number 249, numero 249. everybody, my name is Milena from EnglishMadeSimple.net. I hope everyone is fine and dandy. Welcome to today's episode. If you're new to the show, you can find transcripts uh, to this episode and 50 other episodes when you visit EnglishMadeSimple.net slash transcripts. Alrighty, so today's episode is dedicated to my niece who is coming to visit us from Chile. She's visiting us here in Adelaide, all the way from Santiago to Adelaide. Her name is name is Valentina. Hello, Vale. Hope you're listening. This is for you. It's Valentina's first time traveling. She doesn't speak English that well, but understands most of it. But this episode is not just for Valentina, of course. Amigos y amigas, it's for you as well. All of you listening to today's episode, I'm sure most of you had to do some traveling before. This is also perfect for you, amigos, to check out, listen in and learn some new phrases um, whenever you're traveling to an English-speaking country. What we will learn today in today's episode is the following. We're going to learn some basic terms or just, you know, basic vocabulary related to traveling, expected words uh, that you'll hear at the airport, um, typical words you'll hear, if you get lost, how to find your way around the airport, and again, if you get lost, uh, we learn how to ask for directions. If you're unsure which way to go, which way is your plane, and you need to ask for directions. And finally, we learn how to exit the airport. Now, why don't we wrap this up with a repeat after me segment? Hmm, I think that's a great idea, Milena. It's a great idea. We're going to have repeat after me after, uh, towards the end of the show. So I will share a few phrases for you to repeat after me. And towards the end of the show, you'll get to practice some phrases as well. And this goes for you to Valentina. You'll need to learn these phrases as well. This will help you get through um, the airport. So let's begin with the basic vocabulary. So the words you're going to learn are departures, arrivals, gate, check-in, seat, bag claim, luggage or baggage, the airline crew, airline terminal, passport, boarding pass, and customs. So that's what I'm going to cover with you today. So let's start with the obvious. A plane, also known as an airplane. We'll just call it plane for short. So, hmm, if you're like Valentina, so you must be leaving your city. Are you saying goodbye to your city? Going on holiday? Well, all you need to know is when you reach the airport, when you get there, you go straight to departures area. We call it departure area. This is where the airline staff process your ticket, take your bags, um, if you have these big bags, your big luggage, and complete the check-in before you get sent to the x-ray scanning um, area. So after you pass the x-ray scanning area, you will reach customs area. This is where you clear customs. Customs, what's that? Customs is run by the federal police, I believe. Normally it's run by security, so the security officials. They view your passport. Sometimes you complete a departure card. Uh, I don't know if this is still the case. Uh, maybe in some of the countries you still have to write, physically write your name and the reason you're leaving. Uh, it's called a departure card. Uh, in Australia, everything is electronic nowadays. You scan the passport uh, and then a camera takes a photo of you and then you proceed to your gate where you're going to board the plane. So... Depending on what country you're departing from, you might need to fill in a departure card. That's fine. It's a very quick card to fill in. So after you pass through customs, you'll get a stamp at the customs to say, yep, you're clear to go. You can wander around and maybe buy some duty free. You can wander some shops, visit some uh, shops around this area. You have things to do. Um, duty free area is basically tax-free area. 
For example, if you like alcohol or you like smoking and it's really expensive to buy cigarettes, a box of cigarettes here in Australia, for example, a lot of people go and buy cigarettes through duty free when they travel. These are the best things to buy when you're going to duty free uh, because you don't pay tax on this and tax is really high for alcohol and um, cigarettes here in Australia. Anyway, probably the same in other countries. Now, other things uh, you can do uh, duty-free, you can buy, I'm not sure if it's worth it, like perfumes, for example, makeup, the usual stuff you see, the most like expensive brands you'll see. I still find it expensive, even though it's duty-free. I don't really tend to buy perfumes from duty-free uh, shops. Uh, maybe I think, well, I think they're expensive. Maybe I'm wrong because I don't wear perfume. <laughs> You don't want to be sitting next to me at the plane, right? <laughs> okay, scratch that. I guess when it comes to traveling overseas, the most stressful part, well, for me, is arriving at the airport. So that's the most stressful part, it's actually driving and reaching the airport, just re getting to the airport. Sometimes, depending on how far away you live, it could take you maybe one hour to get to the airport. When I used to live in Melbourne, it took me one hour to get to the airport. In Melbourne. Um, all right. So the most stressful part is getting to the airport um, and then going through this whole check-in and customs process because you have to wait in the queue. There are people there. It's busy and you just wait in the queue. But once you go through all that, it then becomes an enjoyable experience. Everything is clearly marked everywhere you go. Uh, you can clearly see wh where your flight is, where your gate is. And you know, I'm pretty sure you can't get lost. I mean, I've had never had that happen to me before. I was never lost at the airport. Um, so you can now relax after passing through customs and being able to wander around. You can now relax before you actually board the plane. Now, on to the next thing. So listen up carefully, Valentina, because you're traveling soon. This one's for you. After you're done with looking around duty-free and being amazed at how expensive everything is, <laughs> I would suggest uh, you find a really nice bookshop, uh, buy yourself a magazine or a book, because you will need it on these um, long-haul flights. You'll notice I said uh, the word long-haul flights, three words. Haul, spelled as H-A-U-L, is another word to mean a journey. For some reason, uh, they always use it to describe flying long distances, long haul flight. So yes, it's a good idea to get yourself a magazine or a book. You can even buy it before you get to the airport, by the way. But when you don't have one um, at hand, maybe it's a good idea to buy at the airport. Sometimes I do that as well. If you're like me, you can listen to some audiobooks. I now do that. I listen to audiobooks. Uh, for some ideas uh, on audiobooks, uh, you can visit englishmadesimple.net slash tools. Uh, scroll all the way down to see my selection of recommended audiobooks. Or you can listen to this podcast. All right. You can listen to this podcast while you are waiting for your plane. That's a good idea, isn't it? Great. Now, after you've bought yourself a book, then it's time to find your gate. In Spanish, this is anden o puerta. So depends where you are. It could be anden o puerta. The gate is spelled as gate, G-A-T-E. When you find your gate, you just sit there and wait for the plane. <laughs> the plane should already be parked there. You should be able to see it. It should have been there before you arrived. While you're there at the gate, listen to the announcements. Usually the staff, the airline crew will be around. Uh, they will provide you with announcements. The closer you are to the gate, the better you'll be able to hear the announcement. The announcements that you're uh, going to hear um, are usually to do when, um, when the plane is ready for boarding. They will be announcing when the plane is ready for boarding, which is an uh, indication for you to start preparing your bags or preparing, some, uh, you know, finishing up your book so that you're ready to board with no hassle. So your next word is boarding, boarding. 
So that's what we learned now, boarding. So you remember how at the beginning of the, this episode I mentioned you check in, you get, you go through the check-in process. That's when you receive a boarding pass. The, this pass, the boarding pass, allows you to move around the duty-free area and it allows you to board the plane. It replaces your ticket, essentially. So keep the boarding pass close. Always uh, keep it somewhere where you can easily find it as you'll be showing it to a lot of people. So a boarding pass looks like a piece of paper with information to the seat area. It tells you exactly where you'll be sitting inside the plane. So it's important to keep that with you at all times. And if you're unsure how to read the boarding pass, uh, an airline crew member can help you. So you just have to ask nicely. All right. Awesome. Let's imagine you're in the plane now. Let's imagine you've boarded the plane. So when you board, find your seat, an airline member or um, an air hostess or an air host will direct you where to go. When you find it, when you find your seat, you can leave your carry-on luggage inside the storage area above your seat. Carry-on luggage. Carry-on luggage is a name for smaller types of bags, not big bags that weigh 20 kilos. These smaller bags that weigh up to 7 kilos, uh, they can be put in a small storage area. For example, when you carry laptops or books, um, you know, you usually carry a backpack, rucksack on your back, right? You have a little bag on your back. You can put that inside this storage area above your seat. Now, in some countries, you're not allowed to bring in food. So be sure not to pack any food in these bags. This is the case, especially when you're coming to Australia. You shouldn't bring any food from overseas. Just be mindful of that. So after about 14 hours of flying, you will have reached Melbourne or Sydney from Santiago de Chile. That's long, 14 hours. So you will arrive at Melbourne airport and disembark the plane. The word is disembark. Disembark means to get off the plane. So it's time to get off, wake up, get your bags and now get out of the plane. So you've arrived at the airport. You have now arrived at the arrivals, um, international arrivals area of the Melbourne airport. I imagine you'll need to clear customs again before you board another plane to Adelaide. When you board another plane to Adelaide, this is a um, domestic terminal. So it's a different terminal. When you arrive to Melbourne, that's called an international terminal. So what this means is that you might need to collect your luggage, your big bags when you're in Melbourne uh, before you board the plane to Adelaide, before you reach the domestics terminal. Again, um, what this means is that you need to follow the signs for the bag claim. This is where your bigger luggage is waiting. So as soon as you disembark the plane, as soon as you leave the plane, all you need to do is look up, see the sign that says bag claim. To reach bag claim area, you'll see that you need to clear customs again. Now you simply follow the signs, follow the signs for bag claim. Collect your bag and proceed to find the airline terminal for domestic um, departures. So you will now keep seeing signs everywhere. You will see the sign for domestic departures. This is what you need to look out for when you are when you need to catch a flight to any other city in Australia from Melbourne. So you were flying international before and now you're going to fly domestic. Again, take your bags with you. When you collect your bags, take your bags with you. Find the airline that you're going to take to fly you domestic. Get your boarding pass. Go through the x-ray machine again and find your gate that will take you to Adelaide. Done. Once you reach Adelaide, you follow the bag claim sign again. You don't have to uh, clear customs once you're in Adelaide because it's a domestic flight. And that's great. Easy peasy Japanesey, right? <laughs> and finally, amigos y amigas, to wrap up today's show, hopefully you learned something along with Valentina. 
Uh, did you know that most airlines nowadays allow for online check-ins? You can do an online check-in on the internet. You go to um, the airline's website, go straight to their website. You can save yourself plenty of time before you reach the airport. This is especially important if you think you might be running late to the airport. If you live far away from the airport, it's a good idea to do an online check-in. I now prefer to use the online check-in when I, whenever I travel. You can complete the online check-in, um, like I said, on the airline's website. I highly recommend you do this 24 hours, uh, at least 24 hours before you fly. So the airline knows that, um, that you're coming. They're expecting you. They're not going to leave without you. Right. So for example, if you're flying Qantas, um, you know, the Australian airline, then go to the Qantas website and complete the online check-in. Alrighty, just something to help you out if you need to make conversation at the airport. You can download my freebie, How to Simplify Conversation, when you visit englishmadesimple.net slash convo. It might spark some ideas for conversations or for asking questions or just kind of refreshing your memory when it comes to English language, right? And now, here are the typical questions you'll probably have when you're at the airport and you need help. So I'm going to share now with you, amigos y amigas, some questions, typical questions um, that you might need to ask if you're asking for directions around the airport. So I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions. Okay, here we go. Which way is the bag claim? Where do I go to clear customs? Is there a foreign exchange place around here? And I'm going to do a repeat after me later. Okay, let me just go through the questions. Question number four, where is the gate number 12, for example? Where is the gate number six? Where is the gate number 20? And so on. How long till boarding? How long, as in how long do I have to wait? How many minutes or how many hours? Where do I check in my luggage? Or if you get lost, you can say, excuse me, I'm lost. Could you please help me find my gate? Where can I find domestic terminal, for example? Where can I find Qantas terminal for domestic departures? Where can I find... Jetstar Terminal, that's another domestic airline here in Australia. All right, and now repeat after me. I'm going to share three questions. I'm going to select three questions from this list and you can repeat after me. I'm going to give you some time. All right, question number one was, which way is the bag claim? Excuse me, I'm lost. Could you please help me find my gate? Excuse me, I'm lost. Could you please help me find my gate? And the last one is, where do I go to clear customs? Where do I go to clear customs? Alrighty, amigos y amigas, thank you for joining me in today's episode. You've been amazing. If you'd like to read transcripts to this show please visit englishmadesimple.net slash transcripts uh, to get a uh, copy of the transcript for this show and 50 other episodes. Thank you for joining me in today's episode. Thank you for following Valentina on this journey. You've been an amazing audience as usual and you've been jamming with Milena from English Made Simple. Until next time, hasta la próxima. Mm -hmm.